Hey, what's up guys? It's the EFI guy here, back with part two of my drive-by-wire config video. In this video, I'm gonna be going over how to configure a drive-by-wire throttle body system. I've got an ECU Master EMU Black ECU. Most of the footage that you're gonna see in this video will be of the ECU Master PC software. However, if you've got another ECU, then most of the information will still apply to you. So, without further ado, let's get straight to it. So, before you begin watching this video, I advise that you check out my first video on how I go about installing a drive-by-wire throttle body system to my Nissan S15. Although some of you may have different engines, the install process is fairly similar. And again, when you're doing anything like this and you're gathering information from the internet, you should always have the pinouts for your ECU, your drive-by-wire throttle and your throttle pedal all with you. These pinouts are going to be fairly crucial for some of the testing that's going to happen in this video and they're going to be fairly crucial for your install as well. Okay, so first things first, what you're going to want to do is make sure that all of the voltages for your pedal and your throttle body are all correct. You can do this with a multimeter and using the pinout guide as a reference, you need to make sure that you're getting 5 volt between the relevant pins. Once you've checked all those voltages, Get your laptop and we're going to head straight into the software. Okay, once you're on the ECU software for your ECU, you want to turn the ignition on. And once everything's loaded, obviously you just do some quick initial checks to make sure that everything is as expected. One of the most important things to do is probably check your battery voltage is all correct and present. Now before I do anything at all, what I want to do is head on over to my inputs list and I already have my inputs assigned but you want to make sure that the inputs that you want to use are not being used by something else in your map. Once you're confident that you have all of your inputs assigned as expected you can go to the log section of your ECU and in the emu black software I have a little section called drive by wire so I'm just going to open that up and then I'm also going to open up the box called analog inputs. What I'm checking for here is that all of my assigned analog inputs have voltages assigned to them and that they're within reason. So here I've got my TPS voltage which is at 0.78. I haven't got my foot on the throttle so that's correct. And then using the list of assigned inputs that I have here, I'm just going to check the voltages and make sure that they all make sense. So this is the throttle position main and that's the inverted one so that's about right. They, they look the same and again this is the secondary TPS analog and again they look about right. If you see any crazy figures in here so like 5 volts or 0 volts then you need to go over your wiring again do your multimeter test and make sure that you're getting the right signals to the right pin the next thing to check is the throttle position calibration so again i've said here that tps voltage here is 0.78 and actually i've got that down as 0.76 so i'll just correct that now and then with the engine off press the throttle all the way down to the floor and make sure that that equals the voltage here again just do that a couple of times and just check those numbers. So you can see here that actually that was correct. Once that's all configured, it's just a case of finding your drive-by-wire settings. In the EMU Black, I'm using the drive-by-wire parameters, which can be found under the section drive-by-wire. And this is the section where you configure the sensor inputs for the actual throttle itself. I've titled mine throttle position M for main and throttle position I for inverse. And then here, you need to make sure that you're choosing your pedal position sensor inverse input. I currently have my drive-by-wire set to disable when no RPM, but for testing purposes, make sure that that's unticked, and that way it means that you can test without having to start the engine. Okay, so the next step to take depends on the ECU that you have and the option that you want to do going forward. These configuration settings need to be configured by your ECU manufacturer. The various PID etc tables down here are all tested by the ECU manufacturer and they're not really something that you should be playing with yourself. If you get those settings wrong, it could at best cause damage to your engine or at worst cause an accident. If you're using a throttle body that 
that isn't common on the market or that your ECU manufacturer doesn't have configuration for, please, please, please reach out to them. Do not try and set any of those settings yourself. On the ECU Master EMU Black, there's a drive-by-wire wizard section here, and this allows you to choose the predefined throttle body settings that are set by ECU Master. So as you can see, I've chosen the Bosch drive-by-wire part number for my throttle body, and that has now pre-populated all of the P, ID tables as well as the different reference tables down here. It's also configured some of the parameters that we have in here and once that's set you can go ahead and hit the enable tick. Once enabled there's some further checks that need to be done with the actual drive-by-wire output values here. So I'm going to just press the pedal and as we can see the drive-by-wire target is at 98 and that actually meets up nicely with our table our characteristic table, which is here. You just want to go up and down, making sure that all of those values make sense. And again, we can see here, there's no crazy fluctuations or anything like that. We can see here that there's a drive-by-wire out DC, and there's a very, very small drive-by-wire pot error. If that pot error is too large, then your drive-by-wire won't work. If you're finding at zero throttle, your drive-by-wire throttle body is fully open, you can invert the motor direction here, although you're probably better off de-pinning and re-pinning the connector at this stage, seeing as it's all completely brand new and fresh start. Another method of configuring the drive-by-wire throttle body is to actually go up here and use the tools and then the drive-by-wire calibration tool. It's as simple as just clicking start, and once you click start, the ECU is gonna start doing some checks and it's going to modulate the throttle body in and out. I've already done this on my throttle body, so I'm not, I don't need to do that. But honestly, it's as simple as clicking start and the calibration tool will ask you to do a couple of things and then the rest of it will all be set by the calibration tool. Again, you do need to make sure that your voltages and everything are checking out right, otherwise that tool isn't going to work. Okay, once the drive-by-wire throttle body settings have all been configured either by the ECU calibration tool itself or using some predefined settings from the ECU manufacturer. The next check to do is go to engine protection and then stuck throttle. Again, this will be depending on your ECU and every ECU will have different stuck throttle engine protection systems. What you want to do here is wire up your brake pedal switch so that when you press the brake pedal, it pulls the switch to ground. And what this means is if for whatever reason your throttle body gets stuck open, you can simply press the brake and the ECU will realize that there's a problem and stop delivering fuel and ignition. Again, this is very important if your car's a road car and it is especially important if you're not using the secondary potentiometer inputs for both the throttle body and the pedal itself. Okay, once you've got all of that set up, the next thing you're going to want to do is go to the idle control section within your ECU and make sure the idle valve type is set up to drive by wire. And you'll notice that in the drive by wire parameter section, there's actually an idle range. So this is the maximum the throttle body can open and it'll be completely dependent on the size of your throttle body. So I'm using a 60 mil throttle body on an SR20 debt and I've set an idle range of six. If you set this too high, you're gonna have significant issues with your idle reaching ridiculous RPMs. So your best bet is to set this low and then slowly increase it if you're having issues trying to get the car to idle at a sensible RPM. Okay, so the next section to look at is the idle control section in the ECU. And again, we're looking at the idle target and the idle reference table here. Now, I've already got my idle reference table set out. However, to begin with, what I suggest you do is you set all of the cells to 50 in this range. That way you can at least get the car idling enough that you can test it and try and make some setting changes yourself or at least get the car idling enough so that you can take it to your tuner. And then finally, I'm gonna to come to the drive-by-wire section and look at the characteristics map. And as you can see here, my map actually has quite a shallow curve at the beginning and peaks quite high at the top. And again, this section of the map is where we're going to tune the sensitivity of the throttle body and this is what I was discussing in my first video about how easy it is to tune the drive-by-wire throttle system. Up here, I've got my rev limiter set to 7,200. And then above that, I've got a rev limit of 8,000. And I have the drive-by-wire throttle 
set to 10 all the way down to 15% throttle position. And that's just to protect the engine in the event of an over rev situation and the ECU isn't able to fuel cut or ignition cut fast enough. This should close the throttle body shut. And that's pretty much all there is to setting up your drive-by-wire throttle body system. Of course, like I mentioned, there's a couple of different settings depending on the ECU provider that you've got. But if your ECU provider offers you the option to do the calibration wizard, again, this makes life so much easier. So once you've got all of your values configured and you're happy to go, there's only one thing left to do but start the car. I hope you found this video useful. Again, this has been a really big modification for me on my car. I've really wanted to do a drive-by-wire throttle body setup, and I hope this video inspires you guys to go away and do some really big change to your car too. If you like this video, give the video a like, and make sure you subscribe to see more content. Don't worry guys, there's plenty more content coming. It doesn't look like we're leaving lockdown anytime soon, so it just gives me even more excuse to deliver some content for you lot. Okay, well that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Fearless.